Today, we're going to be reviewing one of my favorite games. Hey everybody, Bobby here from the GM Table, and yeah, today we're reviewing what's very quickly become one of my favorite games ever. Last week, we covered Tales from the Loop. This is the sequel, Things from the Flood. Basically, everywhere where I think Tales from the Loop either doesn't quite hit the mark or I'm not a huge fan of, Things from the Flood nails. It is the refined version of Tales from the Loop. Now, to quickly summarize things, if you haven't seen the Tales from the Loop review, this is a D6-based system. However, it's pools of D6. You roll only sixes count. You have an attribute score. Each attribute has linked skills, and you have a skill score. You do whatever your attribute is. You do that many dice, plus however many dice your skill is. If you have an item that gives you a bonus, you might get some extra dice. You roll them all. Typically, you're only hoping for one success, but since only sixes count, it can still be very difficult. The game also runs off of your characters picking tropes or types, which aren't quite classes, but they are archetypes that determine what your core skills are, which are skills you can have higher than one rank in at character creation. But other than that, it's not a lot. It's not this huge class-based system. The big question is, how is this different than Tales from the Loop? Well, first of all, Tales from the Loop, you play like 10 to maybe 14 year olds. You play kids on bikes. Things from the Flood takes the same world of Tales from the Loop that was in the 1980s that never was and pushes it into the 1990s that never was. And with that, it also ages the expected characters to teenagers. You are now playing like 15 to 17 year olds and it does change a lot. The two biggest differences are while Tales from the Loop had rules where it was assumed players can't die, Things from the Flood brings in death mechanics. Where in Tales from the Loop, if you got too many conditions, you'd end up broken, which just meant you were essentially out of the scene. In Things from the Flood, you're broken, and when you become broken, you gain a scar. Any scar after your first, you have to roll a d6. If the d6 comes up less than the number of scars you currently have, so once you have two scars, if you roll the one, once you have three scars, if you roll the two, if that D6 ends up being less than the scars you have, you instead died. Simple. It's a really simple death mechanic, but it makes a lot of sense. Now, to be fair, with how loose and narrative this system is, maybe the thing that broke you isn't damage. So how would being incredibly embarrassed kill you? It doesn't. You're dead mechanically. Maybe you literally are dead Maybe you move away. Maybe you just stop hanging out with all these people. It makes for a very interesting way of looking at putting death on the table, but physical death not being the only thing, much like the conditions in Tales from the Loop where injured is only one of the four conditions, while the others are actually emotional. This is a role-playing game, not so much a combat game. Though you can do combat, it's just not a very deep combat system. It's not built for that. The other big difference in the rules is while Tales from the Loop had the home base, the treehouse, where as long as two players kind of RP a scene of bonding at that location, they got to heal some conditions. Things from the Flood goes a very different route, and this is where I think Free League Publishing kind of cracked the secret of making performative roleplay integral to mechanics and not just two things side by side. This mechanic has informed my game design decisions moving forward and is actually the basis of the games we're currently working on. For them, it is the friction mechanic. Now, friction is something the entire group agrees on at character creation. It is a group choice. This can range anywhere from quirky misunderstandings to sexual tension. And I do appreciate, since I did bring up sexual tension, they even take note of saying, just because it's sexual tension and those are the themes, it doesn't have to be characters having sex. I'm looking at you, Monster Hearts. There's a lot about your game I like, but sex moves always felt kind of gross. This goes, I think, a much better route. That is the theme that constantly creates friction or tension within the group. You're all friends, but once you're teenagers, even though you're friends, you're not always going to get along. And that's the foundation of this. When two or more characters have a scene based on the prompt of their friction, whether that friction is causing problems, whether they're resolving problems that are based on the friction, any of that, they heal. 
this is where the RP mechanics that let your characters heal go from, oh, cool. So if you take the effort to role play, you get to heal into kind of almost an improv territory of if you role play based on a prompt everyone agreed on. I love this. I love this so much. Now, as for the world, I like the world of things from the flood more than tales from the loop. It is technically the same world, but it moves forward 10 years. One of the things I wasn't huge on of Tales from the Loop is it's a 1980s game with flying cars and super tech and very little of it actually felt like it was actually in the 1980s. It more felt like the 1980s idea of the future, which to me isn't actually a 1980s game. It's a retro sci-fi game. Things from the Flood, still weird, still future. There's still AI robots and stuff. But for reasons unknown, as the GM you might know, all that tech starts failing. There aren't flying cars anymore. All the flying cars are breaking down. And the like super huge advancements and stuff that happened in Tales from the Loop of how they got that tech starts to show its cracks of no one knows how to fix the tech. No one knows how to recreate the tech. And on top of that, there's these weird biomasses that are infecting technology and overgrowing it. And it has almost this like eldritch Lovecraftian feel to everything on top of all of it. Things from the Flood is darker than Tales from the Loop. It's technically grittier, but I wouldn't call it a gritty game. It's just a more mature game without going, oh, we're rated R, extreme mature. No, it's just mature, like actual maturity. It grows up a little bit. It's still teenagers. It's still pretty lighthearted, and you can get into some antics. But it's not as carefree as being kids. There's more responsibility. There's more learning to grow up within the rules. Similar to Tales from the Loop, the rules itself, less than 30 pages. The rest of the book is either setting or several pre-made adventures in the back, as well as a lot of rules for how to make adventures and run mysteries and all of that great stuff. I highly recommend this. Full disclosure, if you hadn't seen my so many free games video that apparently a lot of you guys did, I actually thought that video wasn't going to do great and it's one of my best performing videos. This physical copy was sent to me by Free League Publishing. I want to thank Free League Publishing for sending me this book, as well as all of those that I'm slowly getting through and reviewing. I had already purchased the PDF. I had already fallen in love with this game before they sent it to me. But now I got a physical copy, and that makes me happy. I also want to disclose it. It does not shift how I feel about this game, because I already loved it. I love this game so much, I reached out to Free League Publishing and asked if there were mechanics within this game that aren't in their OGL, because this uses the Year Zero engine, as we discussed again in the Tales from the Loop review. And the Year Zero engine does have an OGL. Anybody can write in the engine, but that version's a little more complex. This is a simpler version of the engine, and there's rules in here that aren't in that. I love this game so much I reached out to them. And they came back to me and said I could use those rules in my own products. This is a game I'm enjoying so much, I'm coming out with at least three RPGs based on the core rules of this because of how flexible it is and because of what we can do with it. This isn't an ad for those games, but I feel like saying I read this book and it inspired me so much I'm writing three RPGs can tell you how much of an impact it made on me. It's not a game for everybody. If you're super tactical, this isn't the game for you. But if you love roleplay, if you're a story-based gamer or GM, definitely try this. I love this game so much. All right, it's that part of the video where we say thank you to our patrons, specifically those of producer and VIP level. These are the people who have really put the extra into helping us make the videos here on the channel, as well as our live streams. This month, for September of 2020, we have Corey, who's also known as Old Cowboy on our forums, Tommy Allen, and Clyde Clark. I want to say thank you to all three of you. If you are interested in becoming a patron, which will give you access to early videos, exclusive playtest material, yeah, we let you guys get access to the games we're working on releasing. I don't want to say for free, because, I mean, it's a patron, but really cool stuff, as well as ways to play in our upcoming one-shots that are happening once a month, check out patreon.com slash gmtable. Anyways, thanks guys.